first of all, it's an honor to uh, spend some time with you and uh, to do so on traditional Mi'kmaq territory. Il fait grand plaisir d'être ici avec vous aujourd'hui. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to come together. I've been sporadically part of this community for a long period of time. I recognize the wisdom that exists in this room already, the level of experience. I'm just blown away by the uh, depth of knowledge and uh, the understanding and the empathy that exists in the small group that I'm, the blue dot group that uh, I'm part of. Um, I've been asked to do this strange thing that's a little different from other uh, folks, I think, in that I'm invited to connect restorative justice to what else is happening in uh, the wider world of public policy and uh, perhaps politics and uh, our personal lives. Um, I have many friends here who I only get to see every so often because uh, I was a hardcore restorative justice person for a long period of time. And I, uh, as Barbara said, was involved in the development of the Nova Scotia program. I went to Ottawa and was the point person in the establishment of the Criminal Justice Act, restorative components of that. Um, but I left all of that, uh, and I came back to Nova Scotia. And when I meet my friends in the halls here, they politely first ask, what are you doing? And that's really translated for us Maritimers who can see through their eyes to, what's gotten into you? Or, you know, what are you smoking uh, in the things that you've done? So I'd just like to share with you a few thoughts with the slides that are uh, in front of us and will get loaded any moment now. Um, in 2002, I left my uh, work in uh, restorative justice, the passion of my life, to become involved in politics. Um, I did so because I uh, had been reading about uh, the challenges that my clients had when I was a defense lawyer. Um, and so many people across uh, uh, Canada had uh, in their daily lives. Um, what I realized is that, uh, with the exception of the North, those of my communities back in Atlanta, Canada, were the ones that were suffering most. And I cared a great deal about uh, the future, but I had never in my life imagined that I'd get involved in politics. I'd never been involved in politics before, I'd never attended a political meeting in my life, and I thought I could come back and be the Premier of Nova Scotia. <laughs> um, so I upped my family and I came back, and I wish at the time that I had seen this slide beforehand, because uh, this is a slide that uh, comes from Don Lenahan's book uh, called Rescuing Policy, the Case for Public Engagement. And it shows in the United States and Canada the steady decline of public confidence in government uh, across uh, both sides of the board. And you'll see this precipitous decline has resulted uh, in people having faith, uh, less faith in institutions generally and recognizing that governments um, have a limited ability to actually affect change. I was 30 days away from being the Premier of the province. I became uh, the leader of uh, one of the political parties here in Nova Scotia. We had a close election in 2003. But what I realized in the 30 days beforehand that was that most of the things that I cared most deeply about, I wasn't going to be able to do if I became the Premier. So my imagination as somebody in the restorative justice world was so many of the challenges that we face are a product of other systems and other challenges that we need to fix, and you can only fix them if you become the premier of a province. But I realized after being in politics for a short period of time that even being the premier of a province doesn't allow you to make the differences that you make. This is a slide that I created in relation to uh, a report that I helped write in Nova Scotia that responded to something for Nova Scotians would recognize the notion of the Ivany Report. I was one of the people who wrote the follow-up report to that called We Choose Now. And fundamentally what it's meant to represent is that the narrative that we hear about the challenges that we face, economically and demographically, are tied deeply to the work that happens around the social capital the soil work that we need to involve ourselves in. So 
that the things that mattered most to me if I was going to be Premier of the province, like democratic renewal and civic engagement and those sorts of things, weren't even on the lips of Nova Scotians. And so I was asked again, what is smoking, when I started to talk about those systemic changes that we need to come to to change the narrative of what we're doing here as a Nova Scotia. So this slide, if you were to consider the work in the soil, represents the work that I've been doing for the last, well, uh, 10 years since I've been out of politics. Um, I have been part of organizations uh, that are looking to ignite a culture of civic engagement, first with an organization called Envision Halifax, and more recently with an organization called Engage Nova Scotia. So Engage Nova Scotia is uh, a coalition of citizens that are working across sectors to sort of help try to make a difference. It's partly funded by government and it's partly funded by the private sector. We were buoyed recently when we did some research, and you probably aren't able to read that, especially if you're at the back of uh, the room. We asked a, a thousand Nova Scotians, who is the group considered most credible in leading change in Nova Scotia? And we gave them all of these options. It included, of course, Elected officials at 3%, nonprofit groups at 4%, government departments at 4%, universities, the private sector at 9% is the second highest. But by far, across all demographics in all regions, what Nova Scotians told us that it was an association in which all of the sectors work together that we are most able, that we're going to be most able to bring about this change. This was relevant to the discussion that Lisa McDougall brought up in our Blue Dot group this morning when she said, should we be part of government and restorative justice, or should we be independent, or is there a possibility of us finding some kind of middle ground? I believe that there is middle ground. I believe that there are many ways that we can begin to go about making the differences that we want. So, our aspiration at Engage Nova Scotia is for more of us to see our challenges and our opportunities and the hurdles in front of us. And for more of us to step up to improve our quality of life. And if we're going to do that, then we need to do so more collaboratively, more adaptively, and more inclusively. We do dozens of things in the run of the year, and I just want to share with you two of those things uh, and leave you with these thoughts. One, of course, if we're going to do this, we need to begin with our first people. And so, in November of last year, we brought together a conversation uh, that we call the New Partnership, in collaboration with many others, and most importantly, uh, Treaty Education of the Mi'kmaq, uh, which is a representative group of the Mi'kmaq community. And we had a conversation here at the Halifax Central Library that included the National Chief and former Prime Minister Paul Martin, in a conversation that was collaborative amongst the people who were present, and we said, who are we as Nova Scotians together? What are our differences and what is our shared future? How can we move together to, uh, as a whole? If we're going to make differences in our justice system, we need to invite more Nova Scotians into, more Canadians into the conversations about who are we together? What is our shared narrative? And later today, um, I will be lucky enough to be at Pier 21, where our organization, and these are just samples of the kinds of things that uh, we're looking to do. Um, we are hosting a, a, a supper occasion called Share Thanksgiving. Some of you from Nova Scotia would recognize it because it matches Nova Scotians with newcomers uh, over a Thanksgiving meal. We've set a new bar across Canada for the number of families that we've matched. But because the Syrian families that have come here this year numbered in the numbers of eight or nine, we couldn't match them with people. So we put out a call to those Syrian families uh, we ended up, uh, this evening we'll be with 250 of them. And we said, are you interested in still having the experience that other people, other newcomers had? We want to find a way to bridge the gap and build a relationship. And we asked Nova Scotians, are you ready to be in relationship at supper tables with them? And so 150 Nova Scotia host families are going to be sitting and breaking bread with them this evening to have the same conversation to begin with. Now, how does this relate to restorative approaches? How does it relate to restorative justice? It seems to me that um, through all of time, we have been coming together around fires, in town halls, squares, in church basements, and in circles, 
asking and answering the question of what does it mean to be your brother and sister's neighbor? What does it mean to love each other? At no time in my life has it been more imperative for us to go deep on this question and to understand in a world that is more fractured than it's ever been in our generation, answer the question of what does it mean to be in relationship with each other. We are seeing fractures all over the world that threaten to take us apart. It feels very much like a fork in the road. And we will take the right fork in the road if we dig deep on the best of the human condition. And we see in ourselves the possibility that with Syrians and with our first people and with the people who are incarcerated and so many others in this country, in our communities, we can find ways to build relationships that can be an example to the world and be the model for our children. Thanks very much.